You can definitely walk on it. I hear it <laughs> That'd scare you a little bit. <laughs> That scare you a little bit. <laughs> What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Smash this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now, one of my favorite types of diving to go out and do is, of course, ice diving. But unfortunately, I typically have to travel a very very long distance to get to where there's a frozen body of water to do that and then I only get to do it for like one week of the year I don't get many opportunities to do it if I ever do get a chance to do it I'm gonna jump just like that because like I said it's one of my favorite time things to do well here in North Carolina we have some very very bipolar weather one day it can be 70 degrees next day it's down in the teens like today it's 11 degrees and I think it's supposed to be back up maybe in the 60s later on in the week um, but it's very bipolar and it never stays cold long Long enough for something actually to freeze over so if we can find a frozen body of water here in North Carolina we're gonna take that opportunity to go ice diving so why ice diving why do we enjoy it well it's a unique type of diving that not everybody gets to do and it's something that builds a lot of camaraderie between the individual divers themselves we have to completely trust the other person that we're with uh, in this case it's just going to be two of us but typically we have a whole team or a whole crew of divers out there and even surface personnel when i teach ice diving i have a minimum a minimum a five surface crew members for every person that's in the water. So you can imagine if it's myself with two ice diving students that are down in the water, we have a total of 15 people standing up on the ice while we're diving. Now the body of water that we're gonna be in is relatively shallow. It's a very, very small pond that we're gonna be diving. Two of us can handle this. The other diver is also one of our instructors. And so his pond froze over. We're headed out to do an inspection. He knows the bottom of the layout of this pond. It's very small, so we can get by with two. But anytime you do dive in like this, first of all, make sure you have the proper knowledge to do it, the proper skills to do it, the proper equipment to do it, and then more importantly, make sure you also have the proper experience to do it before you get out there and put yourself into a dangerous situation. All right, guys, we're here at the pond. I'll show you what it looks like real quick, and then I'll talk a little bit about how we're going to prep this site. It's going to be a little unorthodox compared to how we normally would prep a nice diving site. But that's just because we've got a little extra equipment here with us today that we normally wouldn't have if we're up north somewhere. So there's the pond. It's not very big. It's actually relatively deep for the size of the pond. But if you look right here, and I'll try to point it out for you, this is where we tested it. And we could see that it's about three, possibly even four inches thick of ice. So our canopy is gonna be about four inches thick. Now, typically, whenever we would cut a hole, whether we use a handsaw to do it um, or a chainsaw, we would always cut a triangular hole. Um, and the reason we do that is it helps us get out of the water easier. We got two sides of the triangle that we can push down on with our hands, and it helps us up out of the water at the end of the dive. However, since we have this beach area right here that we can just walk down into, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up here you get a tractor out of the shed and we're just going to bust a gigantic hole here and then we'll suit up and get our dry suits on and we'll take a, a sledgehammer or a saw of some type and come in and cut a bigger area just so that we can walk straight in from the beach on so we're going to get our game plan here we're going to cut a hole and hopefully do some ice diving
All right, guys, so if you're wondering why we're making multiple holes here, typically when you go ice diving, you've got your entry and exit hole, and then you also have a safety hole cut. That safety hole is typically gonna be um, at the furthest end of wherever you're diving, so your diving zone, if you will. It's gonna be at the furthest end, and that's for a backup crew to be able to come in. Well, since the pond is so small, and since we're limited on resources today, we're actually gonna make several safety holes. So our initial entry hole is gonna be right here at the beach area, as you can see. But we're gonna put a safety hole on each side, and then we're also putting one at the feathers tipped out there, and we're actually cutting them very large. The whole point of this is just for us to go out here and inspect the pond and have a little fun doing some ice diving as well. But we wanna make sure that we have multiple exit points. Since we are limited on resources, we're only gonna have one diver in at a time. Of course, we're gonna have the tender up here. Whichever one of us is not diving is gonna be the tender. And we wanna just make sure that we have a couple extra precautions put into order just because we are limited on resources today. So like I said, here's our entry. We're gonna have a couple little safety holes over there. Also have a couple over here on this side as well. And that way, if anything happens, all we've gotta do is come up to the edge of the pond, swim around, we'll pop up out of it very easily. All right, guys, got a question for you real quick. As he is breaking up some of the ice here, I wanna show you what it looks like. That's about how thick it is. So my question for you, and if you're already an ice diver, you'll probably be able to answer this question. But my question for you is, how thick does the ice have to be before you can actually walk on it? Furthermore, how thick does the ice have to be before you can drive a vehicle, such as a four-wheeler or a pickup truck on it? Uh, and then how thick does it need to be before you can drive, say, a tractor and trailer, a big rig on it? Let me know down in the comment section below what you think about how thick the ice has to be for us, one, to stand and walk on it, two, for you to take a normal size vehicle, and number three, how thick does it need to be to support the weight of, say, a tractor and trailer? You can definitely walk on it. <laughs> that scare you a little bit. <laughs> I I go all the way across. <laughs> that hurt? I'm gonna have to go get the sledge. Now it's gonna get slippery. Just don't lose it. And off he goes. Guys, if you're wondering how we do lines and stuff for ice diving, you know, unlike say cavern diving or cave diving, these are not guidelines that we use. These are safety lines and there's a big difference. Guidelines just simply guide you. A safety line is to be used say in an emergency. If I need to, I can pull him out of here very easily. So if he gives me three tugs in this case, it lets me know there's a problem then of course I can pull him out. But basically I've got a length of rope here, feeds down into a bucket, connects to another rope just so that we have the extra length. And then the other rope is connected to a solid surface. 
so that we can always have it attached. In the event that I accidentally just let it go, then of course it'll still be attached here and he can always find his way back out. But typically if we're out, say way out on a body of water or something, we don't have nothing to tie the rope to. We'll actually create another little hole. Imagine a little hole right here if you would. And essentially what I would do is put an anchor system that I could shove down through the hole and it anchors to the bottom of the ice. And of course that would feed over to whatever trough we're using, whether, you know, sometimes we'll use laundry baskets. Those work good too here. We're just using a five gallon bucket, but it'll feed over into the bucket. And then the uh, line comes up out of the bucket and that's the tendering line here. So now that he's starting to swim back, I need to pull up some of the slack here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up some of the slack. It's very important, just like in search and recovery, just like in public safety, that we keep that line taut. That way, if he gives me a hand signal uh, or a line signal or a rope signal, then of course um, I can feel it and I can respond appropriately to him. I think he might be entangled in the line. This is something as search and recovery divers, public safety divers, ice divers, even cave divers and cavern divers. It's something we should always be cautious of, of getting an entanglement, remaining calm, relaxing, and working our way through it. Yep, he's untangled. He just gave me three pulls. I'm gonna pull him out of here. Just a second. You getting tangled? No, I couldn't. I was trying to follow the rope, and I was, I mean, I was pressed against the ice. Oh, okay. I was, trying to, I was wanting you to make, take up the slack. Take up the slack so I knew where to go. Yeah, gotcha. Gotcha. So go out and turn right? Yep. Probably go about two fin kicks and turn right. It's deep over there, so. Hi right, guys, we're out of the water. We had a great time. Um, visibility, really bad. I'm gonna say grand total, we had zero foot of visibility. It was pitch black under there. Even when I was directly underneath the canopy, you couldn't really see much. Um, if you wanna see some really good ice diving videos that we've made in the past, I'm gonna drop you a couple of links down below. Now, a couple of these videos are commentated videos, meaning I'm gonna talk through what we're doing and how we train and things like that. So hopefully they'll be educational for you, but it'll also show you some of the pristine conditions you can have when you're ice diving as well. So definitely go and check those videos out. I know somebody's gonna ask, well, why do you go out and dive in zero vis? What's the whole purpose? You can't really see nothing. Well, a lot of times for us, it's all about training. It's how we can train to 
become better divers. And sometimes as a salvage company, we have to go up underneath the ice and salvage a vessel or salvage a car or whatever breaks through. So this is a more of a controlled way of us getting out there and training because we don't get this opportunity much unless we go up north. And it just so happens, it got cold enough, his pond froze over and it made a perfect training situation for us. But guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you got any questions on ice diving, drop me a comment down below or send me an email at brian, B-R-Y-A-N, at lakehickoryscuba.com, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. But guys, that's going to be it for today. I'm going to go ahead and sign off. So take care, God bless, and I'll see you in the next video.